workshop of the quarter. Today we're going to be teaching about PCB design. Uh, I'm Caden, this is Jessica, we are your two workshops leads this year, and we wanted to give a sign-in link, and also to say that right after this workshop, we have our GB kickoff event. GBs, or general boards, are basically our little family mentorship groups within the street of Gumsy. Uh, there are little mentorship groups within IEEE, you can learn about internships, research, class, whatever else. Um, and also just find a lot of really good social events. So yeah, we are going to be walking There's over there after this. As well. There's food. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a few new people here. Uh, feel free to sign in. Yeah, feel free. Uh, so, we're gonna get started here. Uh, I know some of you are finishing up. Uh, basically, if you haven't so far, uh, please download Eagle. Eagle is a PCB design software. Uh, it's free, it's by Autodesk, and the link is up here, but if you just type in Autodesk Eagle and free download, uh, you should be able to find the right version for your operating system. Does anyone here not have Eagle? Okay, cool. Um, so, today our main topic is going to be about circuits and how we physically make them. We have two main ways that we can realistically connect up circuits. We have a breadboard and a PCB, a printed circuit board. That's going to be our focus today. So breadboards are really good for rapid prototyping, experimenting, but in them we have to connect everything using wires. Now, this makes them very bulky, very messy, um, and also the wires can get ripped out, tear out, uh, it's not great. Or we can make a printed circuit board. These are a lot neater, um, they are connected using solder, which is like a metallic glue, which is a lot mechanically stronger. Um, additionally, because things are so much neater and that we don't use wires, uh, we can use surface mount components, so we can have a much uh, denser and a smaller board overall. But they can be a lot harder to actually build um, and you can't like realistically change them once they're made easily. So, to represent our circuits, we use schematics. These are basically a two-dimensional circuit blueprint where we represent our components using symbols and our connections with lines. Um, I said before components. Uh, here are a bunch of common ones. Uh, we aren't gonna go into depth on these right now. But the main thing to know is whether they are a polarized symbol. This basically means that it's like the direction of the symbol matters. Um, electricity is only supposed to flow one way through it. Main things to note here are LEDs, which are like our mini light bulbs, and capacitors. Um, so if we wire things with the wrong polarity or connect them up in our circuit board with the wrong polarity, uh, they can pop and or burn. So that's something to just be very careful of. Um, when we are working with ICs, integrated circuits, or other things that we would generally just call them chips, um, they can be a bit trickier. Generally, they're going to be a rectangle, um, and they're going to be numbered with their pins uh, going counterclockwise in a loop starting from the top left. But like here, it's very much so not always true. So just be very careful when you're looking at what pins actually correspond to. You can find this always on the data sheet of whatever part you uh, have. Okay, so at this point, we are going to pop into Eagle very quickly. Also, so, you might find, sorry, because I already posted a slide link on the workshops, um, Discord channel, workshop announcement. You might need it later. 
Okay, yeah, so what we have done right now is just a fresh open up of Eagle. So we're gonna go to File, New, and we're gonna create a project. I'm just gonna name this, say, I could believe, TCB Workshop. And feel free to follow along if you want. Then, uh, in our project, we're gonna go File, New, and add a schematic. So here, we can now see our schematic interface. Uh, this large white open space here is where we are actually going to design our schematic, that's our workspace. Um, on the left is our toolbar, where we have some important commands, like being able to move and rotate uh, things on our workspace, actually adding parts, drawing wires, etc. Um, and then above here, this is our command line. This is where you can put in more advanced commands. We won't be using it heavily right now. Okay, so now we are going to start our first demo. What we're gonna do is we are going to import a part into our schematic. So let's say we have some part in mind that we want to use. Um, here we're gonna use a JST battery connector. Uh, let me actually walk you through this. So we're going to go to DigiKey or Mouser or any of these large electronic suppliers um, and in our part here. So it's gonna look something like this. And if we scroll down, we'll see something called EDA model. Wait, wait, can you, yes. can you like go up to there? Just that like, you can go and type in DigiKey and search this part number. This oh, yeah. whole if thing like. right now. And the link or, is also on the slides. Yeah, the link is off the, on the slides that I posted on our workshop announcement. If you can open up there. Um, but we will also be giving you guys a few minutes to do this yourselves. Um, so we will continue in just a moment. Okay. So we're going to go again to EDA models. EDA for Electronic Design Automation. That's basically this PCB design softwares and other things like it. We're going to go to the model by Snap EDA which is just a site with a lot of models. Uh, here, we are gonna go to download a symbol and footprint, choose the eagle, and out we are gonna pop out a .lbr file, a library file. Uh, Snap EDA might ask you to make an account. Uh, you will likely use Snap EDA at some other point, so I recommend you do. Um, it's pretty quick to do. Okay, so we are now gonna pop back into eagle Back to our schematic. We are going to go to. Uh, we are going to go to library, library manager. Okay, uh, something like this is going to pop up. We are going to go to. Uh, actually, it doesn't matter. But once we open our library manager, we are going to select browse. That's going to open up our Eagle library folder. That's not where we downloaded our file to, though. We're going to go to download, do something like control X to cut or copy the file. We're going to go back to Eagle's library folder, put it in there. Okay, we're going to put it there. Um, and now we are going to select our file, open it up. Okay, so now we should be able to scroll to see where it says, uh, go to the available tab. Um, you should see that name of the part there, the B2B, uh, PH, etc. You're going to hit use and that will move your part from available to in use. And once the part is in use, we can go to add part, which is the little symbol with a plus sign on the left in the toolbar. Um, and here, we are able to, in kind of all of this, find that part. And here we should see our symbol and our footprint, which we'll touch on a bit later. But now we can hit okay, and we can actually place one down. So now that we have our part, if we want to stop placing, 
we have to double click escape. All right, so it's pretty quick, uh, but that is going to be our first task, actually importing that component there. And we're going to give you guys a few minutes. Uh, we will be walking around to help. And, and Alvin here is also going to help you. Yes. You start feel a little bit here. Okay. Do you have hands, please raise your. Oh, if you have questions, please raise your hands. And additionally, we will be putting a little slide, uh, basically instruction set up here that you can look at as we go. All right. Good luck. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. How's it going? I have to sign up for the Can you, do you have, do you have our Discord? Uh, okay, can you go to the Discord? You will need to actually use your Discord to browse. Go to in use actually and see if it's, if it's a good thing. So, just we're going to use that. Yeah, yeah looks good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's it's so happy to use it. It hasn't actually sent me a verification. Okay. Um, so, I will say, uh, if you go to what that file is, it's a yeah, it says, so that's the issue. Yes. And then, uh, scroll down to the page. Yeah. 
Oh, just because it's so. Uh, oh, it's on the top of it. <laughs> yeah, it's just Mac. Okay, I was like, why did it? Yeah, I used to win. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so these are the I'm sorry. No, I'm not in one of them. Yeah. Okay, so project is like the bigger file yeah. that will include like your schematic, also your reward. So it's better to like have a bigger file on the outside there, just like the next thing that I can do. So I thought I was just like a bigger file. I didn't even know it was anything, honestly. And then go ahead and take it. Oh, I'm so good. <laughs> Oh, wow. 
So, uh, in Eagle, uh, besides what we've done, we have yep. been able to basically import parts so far, but we need to actually be able to connect them and make a full schematic. Uh, some of the things that you'll need are nets. These are basically the actual electrical connections between pins and components on your schematic, just like wires. Uh, we have labels, which are self-explanatory, uh, just you want to stay organized, especially as your schematics get more complicated. Finally, I've been using them interchangeably so far, but a part is essentially any component that goes on your board, a resistor, a integrated circuit, etc. So, our next task, and the schematic that we'll be building and later turning into a circuit board, is this circuit here. It's basically two blinking LEDs controlled by a 555 tire kind of like a electrical pulse generator. Um, we will be walking you through this with this. Okay, so, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and since we already know like what the net is and what schematics are, so let's basically go through how to build this. So in this part, the second demo, also you will be doing this as well, so I feel free to follow along. So you'll be learning like how to add parts and also connecting. So let's first um, start by adding the 555 timer, um, which is this part right here on your eagle. So you go to eagle. So let's hit the add components part and put in star um, on the search bar and then click on 555 and then click star again and hit that like, okay. So now you'll see like all kinds of different 555 timers, but the one we are gonna use is the SD microcontroller one, the SE555. This is the one that we are gonna use. So go ahead and click OK here, and just place it wherever you want to be. Okay, so we can place it here. Okay, so now that you have like the most important part of our whole timer, um, whole schematic, Let's go ahead and add the other parts. Uh, also, one thing to note is that we need to put star and then, okay, we need to put star and then whatever you want to search and then star again on ego or ego won't like recognize it. Also, don't type in like one letter in ego because it'll crash. And I learned that the hard way, so don't do that. Um, so yeah. So we can go ahead and import the different parts. The parts are listed here, but I just wanted to tell you guys how to import the PCCs and ground since we will be using this a lot in our schematic or like PCB design. So you can go ahead and click on add parts again. And this time, this time we're going to put PCC. And the one that we are going to use is the supply one. Like right under it, this one, we're going to use this one. So you can click OK and just put it like on top of the header right here. And you can also go inside and like, um, you can go inside and like hit properties and like change the values of it, or change the name. Which one though? Okay. So now let's like add ground, since you'll be using this a lot as well. So for ground we use G and D, so type in G and D. And then the one that we'll be using is also the supply, the first, oh wait, I think the second one. The second one is the one that we'll be using. You can click OK and just add it anywhere else on the circuit. Uh, okay. Also, something to note is that you can copy paste your components like on Ego, so you don't need to do it again, like go through add parts and everything again. All right, so 
If you type like LED chip, yeah. 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 if we yeah. expand yeah. it, yeah. 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 we yeah. should yeah. see yeah. 1206. Oh, yeah. yeah. Type in the uh, 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 
actually start wiring stuff up. Uh, remember, you're going to primarily use the net button, and also feel free to use the move and rotate command to just set everything up to look nice. When you are trying to move or rotate something, if you see this tiny little like cross in the component, that's what you click on to move and rotate. Yes, it's annoying. And sometimes it might be hard to find. Like I don't know if it's a good example on these components, but sometimes it'll be like in the corner or something very hard to find. Oh, okay. So it's tough. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. Play Yeah. Uh, 
How are things over here? Um, yeah, so go to iTrickleyBruins.com and you should see some mailing list buttons. Uh, you can click the game. I'm actually, I haven't seen that pop up. I mean, I haven't seen that pop up. I have to look at the recipe. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can text that. Do we see like the one that you can So the capacitor is both the same, I just changed the value. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna say capacitors. Just, okay. Absolutely, that's your okay. control. Pen. So for anyone that's like kind of confused, these two capacitors, they're the same footprint. I just changed yeah, so the values of them from five mic um, one microfarad and like this, it'll close ten microfarad. Yeah. So this has to be open. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we actually want to take a moment to teach one last thing that you'll need for this. Um, no worries if you're still in progress of moving things around, importing parts, uh, I guess connecting things up. Uh, if you right click on say a resistor, that's where you're able to set the value and it's gonna be the value button that you select. Um, Jessica will walk you through a quick demo but that's how you're actually going to say like what resistance each of the resistors are. Okay. Um, Oh, that's the original. It's annoying. But, okay. 
still working on their schematic. Uh, I hope you saw it right here. We're gonna give you guys just a sec to download the complete schematic and start on the board just so you guys are able to get some experience uh, with this too. So, take just a moment to do that. You guys can go ahead and give us like a thumb up when you finish downloading the schematic. Like, are you at this point? Uh, yeah, so you are going to
you don't want two air wires, you want to try to limit, like minimize the air wires crossing each other. Um, as you can see here, there are like two air wires here. You don't want the um, resistor to be flipped so that the air wires would cross each other. That's generally bad practice. It'll be really hard for you to trace. Um, also, for some things to keep in mind is like for IR sensors, they're basically distance sensing um, sensors. Uh, so what they do is that they shoot out a beam of light and then like they get the reflection from it and they calculate the distance in between them. So you want your IR sensors to like be on the side of your board so nothing will actually block it while it's like shooting a light. Uh, also, like the orientation, like I said, will matter. So try not to make wires, air wires cross each other. Also for uh, microcontrollers or ICs that has a lot of pins, like your side by side timer, usually you want to put it inside the middle. That's because you want to leave room so that the other legs can actually have room to trace to other components. Also for, it should just look better. Okay, so now for your task three, which is placing components, I'm gonna go ahead and demo some things that you should do. So I already placed um, one resistor here. I'm gonna go ahead and just move it a little bit to the side. And I'm gonna start placing my side of by timer. So generally you want to like place the thing that you have the most pins like in the middle of the board, like thus. And you can go ahead and place um, this. Okay, another thing that you want to keep in mind is that you want to have the connection relatively closer to the pin that you want to like trace to. This will be better um, for connection wise. So as you can see right here, like the air wires are crossing each other and we just generally don't want that so you can rotate it so that the air wires won't be crossing each other and just place it down like this. And for resistors as well, you can see that the air wires are crossing each other. We don't want that, so we can rotate it so that they won't cross each other. And place it closely to um, the part that you should connect it to. Okay, so you guys can go ahead and start doing this part. Basically place everything from the left to the right. And go ahead and start. And if there's any other questions, please feel free to raise your hand and ask. Also additionally, uh, Megan here will be helping, so feel free to flag her down for questions as well. Where are my things? Oh, oh wow, this is so small. Where? I lost it. Where is it? And just to clarify, for now, yeah, we're just placing things, not actually doing anything. We won't be tracing anything yet. That's the next task. Next step. But right now, just place everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Huh? I don't think you should be asking me that's what I just did. Oh! Where'd it go? Wait. Wait, I think this is it. That's like good. I would recommend you zoom in now. Oh, you challenged me. I found it. 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 I found you can basically put components on the other side of the computer. So you can do that by clicking it and then... Is there a smart way to put it? Oh, no worries. But yeah, you can basically kind of adjust the rectangle truth in scale. And all these components, as you can see, we can fit them in a much smaller one. So I would shrink it down something. Um, and then we're basically yeah, going to uh -huh. just kind of uh, position all of our parts just to try to, as little as possible, have like air wires cut off. Um, yeah. Very fast, yes. He's very fast. 
Satisfied with how it's laid out right now, or are you just looking for feedback on your layout? <laughs> um, I think there are a couple optimizations you could make. Like this, like for example, this crossing right there, and in general, there's just kind of a lot of space on your board. You can definitely compress this to make more. It doesn't really matter for this, but you know, it might be. Uh, hey everyone, um, he's kind of short here. I'm just gonna tell you how to like place components on the back again. So basically, we have this. Um, here. So how you do it is that you click on info, you click the capacitor, you hit mirror, and then you hit enter, and it will go to the back. So instead of being on, like on the top surface, it's oh, now going to be on yeah. the bottom surface of your board, right? What's oh, also nice about PCBs yeah. versus yeah, like a breadboard is you can put things on both layers to be even more uh, space efficient. Wait, why are you so? Okay, so it can also work if you just right click this and then click on mirror. Basically, you can click here and then click on this so it will go to the other side. Like, it looks like a good thing. Like, I don't know. 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 I don't
close together, but it's still kind of a trade off of how close these together things are and how like hard it is to route to like connect everything. So it's a little bit of a nice and time. Oh, it's mine though. Okay, it's mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so like that, I think it's kind of ugly. Yeah. Well, not, not even functional for our folks, but it doesn't really matter for the sake of the example, but you would actually see this. I would have to put it in the middle before, so it feels kind of ugly. Oh, so this is a tree. Oh, this is a tree. That's probably like the other side. It's a tree. It's a tree. It's a tree. It's a tree. actually going to teach you guys shortly here a way to get around. So, that one's a full game. Yeah. Looks like it sucks. sucks. But, yeah. wow. I like saying it wrong. Oh, you just scroll down. Yeah, I can do that. Thanks. You guys do? Uh, I think Although, this may or may not be like an optimal plan. If you're just curious. Yeah, exactly. What the hell is this? Aw, you think we're just going to look at mine, though. <laughs> I'm 
So, uh, we're going to move to the next step, which is chasing your board. Um, My life's so okay, so <laughs> now we need, we're going to explain chases. So, chases, I said a lot of times, but basically they act as like the connection to your components. Um, basically, you're going to draw like physical layers of copper like lines on your PCB board. And for chases, it's generally good practice and also good for PCB and manufacturer to like have it at 45 degrees, not 90 degrees, because this will save like more material and later when you do like um, polygons, <coughs> which is like you fill the whole um, PCB, um, one, ser one surface of the PCB with like ground or like some signal, then it will like not create as, it will like not create as much bottleneck. Um, also for chases, it's like better if you don't put them really close to each other because or components really close to the chases, but because you need to keep in mind that you're gonna solder these things on. If you put them too close to the chases, then you might like have solder on it, and that will cause short, which is not good. Also, you want to keep in mind that um, chases, like the width of the chases. So for like analog signals, um, communication high speed, they usually are like 60 mils. For high voltage and powers, you should have them as like 45 mils. It's because like higher voltages will create like more current, so you need like more area for it to like flow through. Less that you have a thicker case. Okay, now for pass, some people are asking like how do you differentiate um, if the components on the top layer or on the bottom layer? Like I said, like the pass for blue denotes as the components on the bottom layer, and the ones that are red are on the top layer. Um, for like rearranging your things, you want to make sure that they're kind of like space out a little bit more so like, like don't overlap and it will also help you with soldering okay now we have vias which is um really good because vias will help you access like the bottom layer of your pcb design basically what it does is that it punches a hole through your pcb board um like what you see here and through like um surrounding the hole is the copper so it will actually act as a connection, act as a wire, and that goes through to the bottom layer. So then you can trace stuff on the bottom layer as well. And this basically like gives up, give us more space to trace wires and like put more components on our PCB board. And for polygons, it basically it holds like a whole um, area. You can circle the whole area and make that area into like some signal. Usually, it's gonna be ground or like. 3B3 or BCC, anything you want. Um, it also doesn't have to be like rectangle, it can literally be any shape you want it to be. But I'm gonna go ahead and demo those right now. So, okay, so you have your components placed. Now we can go ahead and like start chasing it. So we want to see like, this is a place where you change the width of your chases. So for our purpose, we're gonna do like 45 for now because I want to connect to the VCC um, signals. So right there, we have VCC signals here. So, and this one here. So let's go ahead and connect them together. Like, yeah, you can do it like this. Um, we're gonna go ahead and connect one together. Okay, so for VCC, this is what you should do. And for like other normal parts, you should just use, um, Big screen right here. And let's go ahead and connect this part. So say you want to like go from the top layer to the bottom layer, then you need vias. So you can do this. If you don't have a mouse, then you can go ahead and like click the bottom layer and then it will have a via right here. So just put it down and then connect your thing. Okay, so if you have a mouse, which is awesome, you can just click like the middle scrolling button here and it will just place a via for you and you can connect it to the top layer. Okay, so you can go ahead and do this, but right now, just pay attention here, we're gonna go through 
polygons. <coughs> so as I said, polygons, you can map like a whole like area into like one type of signal. So go ahead and just like, oh. oops, okay. Go ahead and go through and like connect the area you want by the signal. And it should pop up something called like signal name. And I want it to be G and Z. So that's the brown signal. So click OK. And there's your whole area of brown. So how do we know like where it's connecting to, to like, or like where the surface is floating? You can go ahead and click on this button here, which is called the roughness. And it will basically fill your polygon into that signal. And we can see here that there's brown on your LED, and like brown is connected on your um, LED, and like, oh, this is weird. Okay. That's an LED as well. Okay, so brown is connected on your LED, and that's good because that's what we want. And say that you want to like chase more, and this is kind of disturbing, you want to take it off, you can use rip up um, face app semicolon, and then hit enter and it will come off. Don't worry if you if you think this is a little bit fast, because um, all the commands will be on the slides here. So I just clicked on roughness, that will basically fill the whole area of polygon to your signal that you want it to be. And rip up is to clear the polygon. Okay, so say you already finished like wiring everything, now the last part is to do the design rule check, which is called DRC. Just click in DR, um, type in DRC to your command line, click enter, and you can see this, and just like click check. And basically this will tell you all the errors you have. I have a lot of error wire errors because I haven't connected everything. But basically you want all the errors to be zero. So you want to make sure that you don't have any other error wires and also you're not overlapping anything. And if you're actually not, if it's like you have zero errors, this window actually wouldn't show up. So that means you're good. And so that's it for this part. And go ahead and just like paste everything together. That's basically the last task. And go ahead and do that right now. And wait, if you have any questions, you guys have any questions right now? Yeah, so after this step, um, in about 15, we are going to head over to the GB kickoff. Um, also, I know some people came in late, so I'm gonna take this to have you guys fill out our sign-in form yeah. with this QR code here. Please sign in if you came in late. This really helps us. All right, and good luck everyone. Call us over.
If you guys want to keep working on this, uh, yeah, we will be, any of us, any other officer will be able to do it. Wait, is it, is it in the 